Welcome to the Hiring and Empowering Solutions podcast. This podcast is dedicated to providing the key ingredients to transform your employees into a dream team, creating consistent results in every aspect of your business, including your people, your process, and your profits. Your team empowerment, leadership, business development, communication, hiring, and firing. As some of the country's leading staffing and management consultants, we help business owners, i.e. entrepreneurs, and the team that support them, what we call intrapreneurs, to powerfully connect and work together to grow the business. Well, welcome to today's episode. I'm so excited for today's guest. Today, we're going to be speaking about from the bar to the boardroom, choreographing business success through authentic relationships. And today's host, I am delighted to introduce Ivy Slater of Slater Success Coaching. And Ivy is an entrepreneur, internationally best-selling author, speaker, a phenomenal podcast host, and professionally certified business coach. And Ivy has worked closely with C. Uh, suite executives and upper upper level managers to advise and create clear strategies that provide instant and long term impact on businesses. I know many of our listeners are lawyers, uh, attorneys, small solo business owners, and Ivy has so much knowledge and wisdom to share with us today. So welcome, Ivy. Thank you for being our guest. Thank you so much for having me, Molly. I'm excited to be here with you. Yeah, so let's let's just dive right in and talk to us a little bit about this concept and a little bit about your background that brought you to from the bar to the boardroom. Um, so uh, my my company Slater Success um, was truly built uh, and, as an extension of a midlife crisis I had ten plus years ago. Um, so we, we, I opened the doors here in 08. In 07, I was falling apart. I had a printing company in New York City. I had been in the printing industry for over 20 years. And I said, you know, I not, don't want to die a printer, you know. And at that point, I didn't, like, resonate with the word legacy or any of that. I just said there were so many things I was going to do in my life. And there's nothing wrong that I've been a printer, but there's more to me, you know. And... Um, so um, that was the birth of the this this company. So, which is my second business as a printer. I had uh, several different evolutions, being out on my own, having partners, a variety of different ways. Um, in looking at this, um, the bar to the boardroom really came out of knowing everything I have launched from one thing to the next to the next, whether it be careers, whether it be. Um, businesses, whether it be hobbies even, or travel, family, the one founding principle is great relationships is how you get to the next whatever that is, is we all build these amazing relationships. And it's so easy to like fall off that path and then saying, oh, I need to go find or meet this to be able to grow this next thing. But very often we have so many resources in our world that we just forget to stay connected to. Wow. I, I love that you started out saying that you had this midlife crisis to use your terms and go from being a printer to a professionally certified business coach. So often I get phone calls from people, whether even if it's an attorney that is currently practicing, let's say litigation, and they are physically in the courtroom and they get to a place of, to use your term, midlife crisis or what they call burnout, uh, they'll call and say, "What well, I, I, I can't do this anymore. I really have been looking at something that's more holistic, maybe more heart-centered, such as estate planning or elder law or elder abuse or uh, mm -hmm. probate litigation, what have you, that I feel like that my clients will give me hugs versus be very upset with me and making that transition. And it's very, very, as you can attest, scary, a uh, tremendous amount of uncertainty and unknown. And it's one thing to have, I always say behind every breakdown is a breakthrough. It's one thing to have this, this, you know, to be at this precipice and to be saying, 
I know I can't do what I'm doing right now to have this breakdown, to have this midlife crisis, whatever terminology resonates with our listeners today. How how to take that 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 breakthrough and that awareness and then actually make the transitions. And what I love about what you speak about so often, especially in your bestseller book, um, from the bar to the boardroom, can you talk to us a little bit of how to make that transition, whether your printer going into a business success coach with C-suite leadership or making a transition in area law that you're practicing, how, how to really leverage those authentic relationships and be able to either carry them in through or just start from scratch and build new relationships. Because a lot of times when you're making that transition, you don't have this endless resource or money or budget to be able to generate leads and uh, PNCs. Okay, so I'm going to give you, uh, let's give the listeners an exercise right out of the book here. Um, and this is towards the end of the book. It's identify a goal. So for instance, okay, instead of doing litigation, I want to do, and I just actually did this recently with one of my attorney clients. She wanted to add in more estate planning to her practice. Okay, she wasn't changing her practice completely, but she wanted to add in more estate planning. And it was a natural extension of what people were already showing up at her door looking for. So it, it, it made a very, very, a holistic is a beautiful word to add in there because it was a holistic expansion. Um, when we look, right, of wherever, we, wherever we're transitioning, whenever we're adding something to our practices, our businesses, our firms, our lives, we identify a goal. And then I do, I'm a list maker, okay? I love a good list, always have. And I start making lists. It's like, okay, who do I know? I don't know. I, you know, where do I begin to think? And I'll say, okay, so who do I know in my, in my business now? Who's in my networking groups? Um, who, who do I know from my printing world that I'm, you know, let me, let me think about that for a minute. Oh, let me think about who I know. I'm involved in these community groups or in these nonprofits or this religious organization. Who do I know from there? Here's a, always an interesting twist. I think about my, my kids when they were younger, my kids' friends' parents. Who are they? What do they do? Who do they know? So I would make a list of, okay, my kids' closest friends' parents. One of my daughter's friends' mothers was one of the, a strategic women who I went to when I was thinking of opening Slater Success. Okay, she had great insight based on her background. So I make all these lists of people. You know, who did I, uh, we have these Facebook groups of high school relationships, right? Everybody we went to high school with. There, there's a group on Facebook for it. Who's in that group now? What do they do? And I make these lists. And then I was like, okay, if I look at the goal, who should I be tapping into? Where are my connections? Where are my relationships that could help me, who could be resources to me? to help me move towards the goal. They might not be the answer to the goal, but they will be resources to help me move forward. So if we looked at um, estate planning, if we look at um, elder law, oh wow, look at that. My friend from high school is the director of a, you know, uh, an assisted living. Or, oh, you know, I have a friend who does real estate in Florida, and there's a huge elder law community in, in Florida, Phoenix, or whatever that, wherever that may be. Who are these people? We so often already know people when we're saying, okay, now I'm going to go, instead of going on LinkedIn to find new people, we can go on LinkedIn and we can use our social networks to reestablish relationships with people that are already in our world and we're much further along. Absolutely. Wow. You said so much there. I love, <laughs> well, I think a lot of times people get to the place of you identify the goal and they go to either a place of fight, flight, or freeze. They get paralyzed and overwhelmed with what do I do next? And then love 
just the clarity around list of who do I know. And I even wrote down the different categories between networking groups, um, the prior area, prior clients, even going from printing to success coaching, your community, your kids, your family, their parents, your close friends. And then that's before we even touch today's technology around LinkedIn, Facebook groups, and some of these other modalities that you had spoken of. I, I just even think of 20, 30 years ago when you're making a transition and when you made your transition in 2008, the, the internet and email marketing and all that was not as alive and robust and prevalent as it is right now. And if you even just focus on these groups that you made of who you know in making phone calls and or sending letters, hey, want to let you know that I've added this area to my practice to use your client. She wasn't necessarily transitioning. She was addition. She was adding something to it. And I, I tell my clients that all the time. I even have a client who sent out a letter where they were adding another area of practice and they just out of, off that one letter, they had could equate $37,000 just to uh -huh. reaching their existing database and letting them know. So here's an, two, you know, two quick examples of how this has worked for me, if it's helpful that I share that. Please. So back in the day when I first, first started selling printing, and I'm going to date myself, okay? Back in the day when I truly first started selling printing, I was in my upper 20s. And my previous job was in corporate events and catering. My first, bus my first printing client was Columbia University's business school. Why did they become my printing client? Because I had just produced their graduation. Wow. Okay, I just called him up and it's like, oh, you know, whoever, you know, Mary, we'll just call her Mary. So excited. I want to let you know I'm no longer with blank. I took this new position, this, that, the other thing. Oh, Ivy, I'm so excited for you. Chat, 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 relationship, relationship, relationship. By the way, who at Columbia do you think I should be introduced to now? Because we know, of course, colleges and university have an enormous amount of marketing and printing materials. How can I continue to be a resource for you? They became the first printing client. So are you saying that what really supported you with building your practice in the infancy stage, your business in the infancy stage was really truly dialing for dollars, if you will, picking up the phone and, and making relationships. And, and that was the most successful strategy you had early on? It is today this continued most successful strategy. So when I st opened Slater Success, I still had my company Slater Graphics for my printing company for an additional, for two, took me two additional years to divest that company, to divest myself from running that company. And what I did is I let all my clients know, it's so exciting, I'm building a, another business, you know, I'm not going anywhere, blah, 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 blah. To this day, one of my clients at Slater Success is an old printing client whose business and evolved and leadership has evolved. She's now president of a global company, right? Wow. She just threw me another client. She's brought me in for trainings and teaching, for coaching and leadership work. Because we've kept... I didn't go dialing, you know, so I want to rephrase the dialing for dollars versus the dot dialing because I have a relationship and I care about people. And because I care about them, I'm going to assume they care about me because we have a relationship. We're not just in business. I'm not just calling them for a sale. Mm. I call and I let people know what's going on in my life. I also call because I'm interested in what's going on in theirs. Wow. So talk to us a little bit. Do you, in your book, do you speak a little bit about, I know often, and you probably hear this as well. Okay, Ivy, you got my attention. You're talking about some global initiatives and contracts and clients that you have, Columbia University. These are some significant names. Tell me what to do. I'm willing. I bought in. I believe in this business success through authentic relationships and how to really cultivate those. 
now what? What do I say? What do I do? Do you get that question often from people? Absolutely. People say, so, so, but how could this work for me? Mm -hmm. You know, or, well, it's different for me because, and I said, really? I said, well, you know, this is, it was, it was so imperative that this book get written at this point, because after, you know, Slater Success, we're in our 11th year right now, Molly, and growing stronger and stronger every day. And business is business is business. And I truly believe the, what the word success equivalent is equivalent to is great relationships. Wow. One, it, it, it is the meaning of the same thing. All business success, you want to build out your brand? Who are the relationships that you could leverage? That could be a resource to you. Who do you already know? We were connected through a mutual relationship. Yes, yes. I was just thinking of that as you're speaking. That's exactly how you and I were connected, a mutual relationship. And they spoke of you on their social media. And I, they're on your podcast. And I reached out to you through LinkedIn. And we hopped on a phone call. And the rest is history, as they say. Right. And I went back to the relationship and I said, oh my goodness, you'd never believe who I heard from when your podcast episode are. They're like, oh my God, that's so great because you guys have so much, so much in alignment. You know, get on the, con- get, make sure, you know, don't just do podcast interview, really get to know each other because you guys have such synergy. Mm, so yes. it's through the relationships have such insight, but if we skip the conversation piece, we lose so much. So I think social media is an amazing, amazing resource to take, to build relationships and make sure you're not taking them offline as well as online. And what would be that one piece of advice you would give our listeners in regards to how to build their business through relationships and and this conversation piece? I love that you, you coined it that. How, so, how to get started with that? So identify something you want to accomplish, okay? Whether that be, you know, a big goal, a big, hairy, audacious goal, but let's build that, keep it simpler. What's something I want to accomplish? And it could look like, gee, and I, I do this challenge for myself. I'd like to bring on three new clients in the next, next 90 days, okay? So I create, a, that's a mini goal. It's not a year-end goal, it's, right? It's a mini goal. I do things quarterly for myself. I, I'm very goal-centric. Um, that's in the book too. Uh, and I look at a mini goal for myself and, you're, and every, all the listeners, look at a, a small goal, something you want to accomplish. Write it down and say, what, who do I know that can help be a resource. And I know I keep saying the word resource because I want you guys to understand the difference that this isn't the end all be all. They're not going to give you a solution. They're going to help you stay on the path for the solution, the win, the achievement. And then think about, okay, so if it's, I want to bring in three new clients, who can I be connecting with? Well, I know clients are referred to me through X, Y, and Z. Or a great resource for me is, you know, business attorneys, a great resource for me, or elder law attorneys, a great resource for me, or real estate agents, a great resource for me, or, right, fill in the blank. And then who do I know in my world already that I can actually, haven't spoken to in a while, or when I spoke to, I actually didn't tell them what I'm up to. I didn't see what they're up to. Then I can identify if I want three new clients, I might identify 10 phone calls to establish, 10 people to speak to. And schedule this in your calendar to schedule the time in to have 10 conversations, 30 minute conversations. You don't have to go out and have coffee with everyone and their brother. Not many people have the time for that. But we can pick up the phone and say, hey, I wanted to catch up. I had a couple of things I wanted to share with you and I was curious. People are like, oh, love to, because you already have that relationship. You have a level of a, a relationship that you're building on first, first grounds of establishment. So when you say, and as you probably <laughs> realize that uh, business owners are literal, they want this step-by-step process. When you say 10 conversations, do you mean within 
a day, a week? How, how often would you recommend? So if I set off for a 90-day goal, I might want to do 10 conversations in the next 30 to 40 days. Okay, pretty easy. Rome was not built in a day. Here, here's, a, here's my expression. Rome was not built in a day, okay? So it doesn't necessarily have to be the week, okay? And although it wasn't built in a day, it's still standing hundreds of years later. So build something solid, continue to build it. Continue, build a good solid foundation in all business. From a solid foundation, you can continue to build and expand. Consistency, consistency is what I'm hearing in the habit of building really that healthy habit to support your goal, even when you're chunking it down. But I love what you just said. What I'm hearing is consistency. And once you start doing that, whatever yours is daily, weekly, uh, 10 con conversations in 30 days, next thing you know, if you detach from the outcome, but you really align with the conversation and the practice of it. So practice makes progress. Next thing you know, like you said, Rome wasn't built in a day. One day you wake up and you realize that you've hit your goal. Correct. And I want to be clear, these are not sales conversations. Okay, they're not sales conversations and they're not sales engagement conversations. They're resource conversations. Every so often, you're going to get a ding, 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 and all of a sudden, so you say, oh, my goodness, I have, you know, I actually need that myself, and that will be, a, a, that's the bonus, but they're resource conversations, and when you're doing, let's say, 10, maybe 12 resource conversations in a month, you're looking on average of about two a week, two to three a week, okay, and it will vary, and we all have business we must implement. It's a norm, it's an amount of time that you actually can schedule in and block out and plan for. Because you know, if you're going to do 10 a month, it's a little more than two a week. I love that shift that a resource conversation versus sales conversation. Because I think I know I'll speak for myself and many of my clients that I've dealt with over the years. When you use the terminology sales, it a lot of have to comes with that and should and anxiety versus a resource conversation where you could maybe be a resource for the person that you're communicating with or connecting with or vice versa. So what I love about that, and I know you've used the interchange that resource really means relationship, but I know I'm thinking of several people now, they can get behind making a resource call in regards to how can I be of service? How can we work together? I like the term that you used earlier in regards to synergy, because not only that, and you've said this earlier, you've made calls and you've connected with people and you've had this conversation piece, but what came out of it was teaching opportunities, training opportunities, and the multiplier of that is significant. And it, it's the gift that keeps on giving. A, when you look for a sale, it's a one-off. When you look to build relationships, it's a gift that keeps on giving and showing up. So this old printing client who is now has been a client on and off in various capacities to Slater Success has connected me to clients, has connected me to nonprofits that I do business with, and so on and so forth, speaking opportunities and numerous, numerous things. When I started tracking our 18 plus year relationship and started actually adding dollar numbers to it, it's over seven figures in sales based on one relationship. But it, I could tell you about her, what her hobbies are, where she likes to travel, where some, we have a, we have a relationship, not, she's not just a sale. Mm. significant difference relationship versus i know term people use quite often referral source mm -hmm. referral sources is always like okay i have to come up with something to give them okay what do i need from them 
But when I truly establish long lasting relationships, I know what's going on in their world. And I truly come from a place of I care. And the greatest business and the greatest numbers behind all businesses come from the place of I care. Wow, I love that. And, and Ivy, you have helped many C-suite executives, upper level managers, entrepreneurs build seven figure businesses with this strategy. And sitting here being an entrepreneur and thinking of our typical listeners, this is actually freeing. Because if you just adopt this one habit and you shift, do it, Tony Robbins talks about that two millimeter shift in mm-hmm. regards to resource and relationship versus I like that term you use one off sale and looking into these lifetime relationships and your whole goal is to have a conversation and connect. There's no stress. There's no overwhelm. There's no anxiety in that. If you can make that consistent habit, whatever it is for you that works into your week in your world, then from that place and you anchor to that with the mindset of Rome wasn't built in a day, it, it gives you a lot of freedom to to have to like I said earlier, dial for dollars or have an intended outcome after each one of those calls and just keep consistently doing that. The proof is in the pudding. You have proof of concept here. It, it is. And, um, and you're a thousand percent right. Consistency is key. You know, um, not just saying, oh, I have to have these conversations, but actually creating space in your calendar and planning ahead. So whatever month it is, don't just look at this week and next, plan it into the next 90 days and say, okay, on Fridays at noon, you know, and on Tuesdays at, at four, whatever that is, however that you, your systems work, calendar it forward. And the amazing thing is, is when it's actually in your calendar, even months in advance, and it's a, a religious, it becomes a religious activity, so to speak. All of a sudden, you have all these great people to talk to because you've opened the space for them to be there. Mm. A little so, woo, yet factual. Yeah. So you get in your calendar, and do you have any wisdom, uh, chips for us, if you will, in regards to what to do when you open up your calendar and you see you have this hardwired appointment called um, making having resource conversations? What do you do or what have you done when you were starting out with this exercise in regards to keep, hold, keeping yourself honest and holding yourself accountable to the goals in some level of um, mindset or self-talk or mantra, whatever it might be, to not let yourself off the hook to say, oh, I got a ton of work on the desk, I'm going to snooze that or I'm going to pause that or I'm going to... Uh, I'll get to it. I have an hour. I'll do X, Y, and Z first. And next thing you know, as we all know, it doesn't occur. So again, I'm going to kind of shift it around from a different perspective. So if I'm consistently working towards achieving new goals, right, whether it be three new clients every quarter, hypothetically, or I'm going to hire my next, I'm going to hire my next paralegal, I'm going to whatever that might be, right? We're consistently looking to achieve our goals. So when we're consistently putting goals out there, I'm saying who in my relationship lists are great connection people for me to speak to. I might be going out and doing some networking. I might be speaking. I might be this or that and the other thing. And then it's like, oh, we should have a conversation, right? Because I'm chatting with people where this is the business world where actually... I might be at at a community event, a a religious, whatever that may be, a wine tasting. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, we should have another conversation around this. Wonderful. I'm available Friday at 12 or Tuesday at 4, the week of blank, which works better for you. Because I already have the spaces in my calendar. Wow. So what I hear from you is you actually hold yourself accountable by scheduling that appointment right then and there when you meet them at the wine tasting or the... 
and I don't have to be looking for how are we going to get this in? We're going to e- we're going to have yeah. three hundred and fifty thousand emails to try to find a time. <laughs> yes. yes, and then we clutter our inbox, and guess what? We're we're, we're cluttered more. We're producing less because we're all we're spending more time on email management. And so how can we streamline, eliminate that whole process? Because I already have the time open in my calendar. I know exactly when I have my resource conversation. Wow. So if you're all listening today, that's, that's, there's many different uh, multipliers, if you will, of that, that you're not playing this communication ping pong of going back and forth, which most people don't get things on the schedule because they've run out of sheer exhaustion of trying to find a mutual time. So what I love about this is is you're you're touching things once and you're you're at the event, you're pulling out your phone, you're scheduling the appointment, and there is your built-in accountability and consequences. Number one, number two, you're not waking up on this designated hardware time when you are going to dedicate to your relationships and resources and wondering, okay, who am I calling? Who am I connecting with? Exactly. Great. Well, Ivy, I know we could speak all day about this topic, uh, but what I would love to highly recommend is that folks stay connected with you in regards to how to choreograph business business success through authentic relationships. And I just love this con- concept around resource conversations. And I know many of our listeners really can get behind that versus the old school mindset of sales calls and and making it more about heartfelt, holistic connection. So can you tell us a little bit about how we can stay connected with you and learn more and, and learn how to purchase your book that you're speaking about today? And I know you've written several others as well. Um, absolutely. For us, you can join me at slatersuccess.com. Uh, Please pop in. Uh, there's also a link to connect with me there on social media. We're under Slater Success as well as Ivy Slater. LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, on all the platforms, and we interact. Um, so please pop in, say hello, connect with me there. Uh, the book you could find on Amazon. We're actually soon, if you stay connected, you will see the announcement as we get into Barnes & Noble probably by the end of the month. Uh, and it's from the board of the boardroom, and it's B A R R E. Um, as well as the resource, if you go to slatersuccess.com, the resource will be there as well. Yes. And we'll also have all the links here in the show notes. But I would highly recommend when you do visit Ivy's site that you do pay attention to her insight tab where she has her podcasts and videos and phenomenal blog there. So we'll make certain we have all of that below in the show notes today as well. So Ivy, thank you so much about really shifting our minds around this whole concept of having conversations and resource and relationship and anchoring to even just this one strategy, the significant difference that it can make in your practice. And I, I, I really highly recommend that everyone listening today go and order Ivy's book because it can be a practice changer for certain. Molly, thank you so much for having me. And I hope many of you find huge success in the idea of working your resources and building and continuing to build relationships that last you a lifetime.